If you find yourself in a place where barbells are not available, but you have dumbbells, well, don't worry. You can still do a full back and bicep program. A channel called Muscles Monsters have successfully showed us science-based programs that we can use with only dumbbells to build our back and our biceps. So I'll suggest you watch till the end of this video. Stay on this video and learn one or two moves and if you find value from the video you click on the like button and subscribe to this channel i'll see you at the end without further ado let's jump right in exercise number one one arm low row four sets eight reps the one arm low row is simply a dumbbell row variation that places a bit more emphasis on the lats. To perform this effectively, act as if someone is pulling your elbow with a string towards your hip on the same side and make sure you're focusing on the mind muscle connection by consciously contracting the lats at the top of the movement. Exercise number two, chest supported wide grip dumbbell row, four sets, 10 reps. Now that we've emphasized the lats, it's time to focus a bit more on the mid upper back. Typically, we'd include something like a barbell row in order to achieve this. That said, since we're limited on equipment, we'll be incorporating a chest supported wide grip dumbbell row. Not only will rowing with your elbows flared a bit target more of the mid upper back, but having your chest supported with the bench will allow you to place less strain on your low back. To perform this exercise effectively, set the bench at a 30 to 45 degree angle. Next, flare your elbows out to 45 to 60 degrees and pull the weight towards your chest rather than rowing the dumbbells towards your hips. This will ensure that you're loading the function of scapular retraction, emphasizing more of the mid upper back. Exercise number three, lat pullover. 3 sets, 12 reps. According to research published in the Journal of Applied Biomechanics, the lat pullover may actually activate the chest even more than the lats. This could be due to the fact that the pecs contract during the range of motion when you're bringing the dumbbell over your head and towards your body. However, the study did note that the moment arm affects the activation of the lats. In other words, you can be sure to activate more lats if you keep the dumbbell farther away from your body. This is because the lats are fully stretched under load when the dumbbell is extended over your head. And according to landmark research, examining the mechanisms of muscle growth, we know that a stretch under load leads to more muscle damage, which is why I recommend emphasizing the lowering portion of the lat pullover to hit more of the lats. By slowly lowering the dumbbell behind us, we can achieve a greater stretch, resulting in greater muscle gains. Exercise number four, dumbbell shrugs, three sets, 12 reps. One 2008 study comparing five different exercises found that the shrug resulted in the greatest upper trap activation. And while EMG research suggests that the traditional barbell shrugs actually don't activate the traps nearly as much as you think, it has been shown that having your arms in a degree of abduction rather than directly at your sides does lead to a greater degree of upper trap activation. This is why I recommend that you place the dumbbell somewhere in between directly in front and directly to the sides of your body. Another change you can make is to shrug both up and back. That's because this activates the upper traps as well as the mid traps since scapular retraction is a major function of the traps as a whole. Exercise number five, concentration curl with negatives. Three sets, 10 reps. According to research by Barons and Buskies, the concentration curl is one of the best movements to maximize biceps activation. 
but if you take a look at the far left of this graph, you'll notice that the dumbbell concentration curl with a heavy negative elicited far more biceps activation than any other classic curling exercise, including the barbell curl. To perform this correctly, set up to perform a traditional concentration curl, but use 20% heavier weight than you'd normally use for this exercise. Now, use your free hand and apply just enough force to lift the dumbbell up. Then, lower the dumbbell as slowly as possible. If you manage to use this intensity technique properly, you'll enhance activation by an additional 40% as seen in the experiment. Exercise number six, incline dumbbell curl, three sets, 12 reps. Whereas a concentration curl will emphasize the short head of the biceps, the incline dumbbell curl focuses a bit more on the long head. To ensure the emphasis of the movement falls on the long head of the biceps and off of the anterior delt, the elbow needs to stay fixed until the biceps are through the mid-range at 90 degrees of elbow flexion. A common error I often see is people initiating the movement from the shoulder joint. The elbow has to start from a fully extended position while moving only the forearm for the initial part of the movement. It is only after this that the elbows can come forward slightly to fully contract the biceps. Keep in mind, both heads of the biceps will be active here due to the exercise focusing on elbow flexion, but the element of shoulder extension places the emphasis on the long head. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget, if you find value for this video, if you like this video, click on the subscribe button, click on the like button so that this video will get to those who need to watch it. All right, so peace out. I'll see you in the next video.